right. You are just a camera, and I am about to be in a rainstorm. And presently, I'm in a uh, young forest. So let me show you what I'm. I don't know if you can see in the background, but a lot of trees and and uh, young trees around. And what I found here is evidence that maybe this ecosystem was different at one time. And what you can see here, these timbers aren't natural. They've been cut, okay? So this uh, looks like used to be cedar log, was part of some sort of human development. And if we look right over here, look, there's barbed wire and a fence post. Let's see where this goes. All right, look, another big timber. These are really old school nails. And this is really old school uh, timber. Look, this was uh, the corner of a property right here. Must have been a farm. Right here was the corner of an old fence. This is called hog panel, or what used to be hog panel, right here. Looks like it's starting to open up. Okay. Oh, look, an old brick. Oh, wow, look at that. That's an elevation mark. That's a surveyor's mark. This had to have been some little small community. And now it's a forest. So how did this happen? How did this community become a forest? Well, it was probably a forest before the community got there. So the community came in, cleared all this land. That's called a disturbance. There's two different kinds of disturbance. I'm trying to yell at you because the wind is really serious. There are natural disturbances and man-made disturbances. They came through with tractors and bulldozers and bush hogs and, and uh, um, mowers and, and cleared all this land and built a community. Then when those people left, whoever those people were, it went back to being a forest, okay? It was probably this grass right here. This clearly was a farm, probably a pig farm or cattle farm since it's barbed wire. And it was probably this grass here. And what has happened is the shrubs and everything started to grow up. And then small trees started to grow up. No small trees. This is the exact same species of elm tree that's right here. Looks like some of the mesquite trees came in. And uh, a lot of this is back here is junipers. They came in and started to grow up, and, and as you can see, they've started to make a forest. And then that forest, those trees will get bigger and bigger and bigger, and eventually th there won't be any grass or anything here at all. It'll just be fallen leaves, uh, the understory of a forest. And so what we see here is called secondary succession from human disturbance. Okay, secondary succession from human disturbance, not secondary succession from natural disturbance. We're starting to rain. Uh, it's cold rain too. Okay. So, uh, uh, human disturbances are going to be things that I mentioned just a second ago. Human development. It's going to be things like bulldozers and mowers and bush hogs and, and mulchers and things like that uh, where, where humans have come in and, and uh, cleared land. Natural disturbances are going to be things like fire, forest fires that come through and, and just burn everything down to the soil or floods that come through flood or come through and, and water will kill everything on an island or in a certain area and then when that water recedes then you get a secondary succession this series of plant communities that start to develop it starts with short grasses and other pioneer species like you see and then you're going to start to get some little herbaceous vegetation things like this here but they're not really trees they're not really woody stems things like this where it's it's kind of woody stems but it's just scr scrub and brush and everything else and then eventually small trees will start to grow like this this elm tree here and they'll they'll become a forest over time and it's a what succession is is a a successive series of plant communities that are common after a disturbance it starts with pioneer species which are light seeded they just blow in and so you can see I don't know if you can see how stiff the, stiff the wind is, but there's stuff blowing around the wind, leaves and, and seeds and things 
blow it around in the wind. And a lot of these pioneer species, like you see here, have have uh, you know very very light seeds that will blow around in the wind, like a dandelion or, or a maple tree or something like that. And you can pause this video and look up a dandelion if you don't know what that is, or a, a thistle or or even the um, the the seeds of a maple tree that are designed like helicopters. They fly off in the wind. Those will be pioneer species, and they start to eventually build a forest. And what it gets down to is shade tolerant species. Let's get up under the forest here and see if we can find a shade tolerant species right in here. All right. Now, now you see under here, because there's shade, where'd all those grass and shrubs go? They got shaded out. Those are not shade tolerant species. They have to have that open sunlight. Oh, so hard to hard to see all the barbed wire in here from the uh, because it's getting so dark from the storm coming in. All right. Even on this elm tree here, it's, it's already losing its branches just from shade. From the shade coming in. Ah, there's an oak tree back here. An oak tree is a shade tolerant species. I don't know if I can even get over there to it. But there, it's a shade tolerant species, so that has to have come up after the smaller, younger forest of elms came in, came in first and started to grow. And then the oak tree grew underneath them in the shade. And that will, and these oak trees will be much bigger and uh, much more tolerant of the shade. And so eventually that will form another forest of oaks. And then it'll get down to beech trees, which are super shade tolerant. And then, uh, this is a nice little forest here. And then eventually you'll get to a forest that, of all shade tolerant species, that are tolerant of the water regimes and everything else. And that forest will last for generations, hundreds of years. That's called the climax community. That's gonna last for hundreds or thousands of years unless there's a disturbance, a natural disturbance or a man-made disturbance. So things like deforestation are disturbances. There's gonna be a community that continues to grow there, but it's not gonna be the original climax community it may be a thousand years before the rainforest looks like the rainforest again after a disturbance. Now fire, oh goodness, sorry, I just walked right up, on, there's barbed wire in the grass. Anyway, after a fire, it depends on how hot the fire is. If the fire kills all of the bacteria in the soil, then uh, the nitrogen cycle carbon cycle and phosphor cycle will cease to work properly and then it will take a long long time for the, the plant communities to recover. In primary succession, primary succession already takes thousands of years because in primary succession you start with bare rock like the birth of an island and I'll actually attach or, or assign with this some YouTube videos of an island being born in the ocean and you start off with just hot volcanic rock and poisonous gases. There's no soil at all. There's no bacteria, there's no seeds, there's no matrix of smaller particles because there hasn't been any mechanical weathering or anything like that. And it takes forever, it takes hundreds or thousands of years for soil to develop. The warmer and wetter it is, the shorter it will take. The colder and drier it is, the longer it's gonna take. So that's one of the reasons that people are so so upset about disturbing the tundra such as the Alaska no National Wildlife Refuge called Anwar a lot of people protest the drilling for oil exploration in Anwar because it takes thousands of years for the tundra to recover from a disturbance whether natural or man-made oh god okay I'm trying to put my toe on the barbed wire and, and get over the barbed wire here oh shit We're going to get out here to where it is more recently disturbed by mankind. Oh, right here, you can see behind me, okay, this 
occasionally gets mowed, maybe once a month, and, uh, you know, a handful of times a year, six times a year, something like that. And you can see that it is really tall, but it's not a forest because humans have come through and when they mow it, that disturbance keeps down the young trees from forming these, these young fledgling forests. And so it is tall brush and tall grass, but it's not a forest yet because it continues. Ah! Oh. Ow! That rain hurts. Ah! That is a lot of wind. Those big raindrops moving real fast. Woo! So you see what I'm walking through here? This is grass and vines and things like this. The young shrubs. This is a uh, looks like a young mesquite tree that's trying to grow, but probably going to get mowed eventually. That's why this is not a forest, but back there is. Because they quit mowing it. They quit disturbing it. And then nature will take its course through secondary succession and try to become a climax forest again.